Number one wants us to sketch a figure that is similar to the one shown. And so when you are making your own similar figure, make sure you um, keep the angles the same. So I'm just going to draw the outline here so that I can guarantee that mine are going to be the same. You can just label yours as the same. Um, but when you make similar figures, the angles should all stay the same size. And then your side lengths should change proportionally. So I'm just going to shrink this a little bit here. And um, in this case, the parallelogram has all side lengths of 12. So as long as you choose a number that's all the same number, it'll be proportional. So if you wanted to decide that you're shrinking it by a factor of two, um, then you could just divide everything by two and you'd get sixes on each side. And then again, just remember that you also need to label the angles as the same as they were um, in the original shape. Number two, write two different sequences of transformations that would show that triangle ABC, this bigger one, and AED are similar. And then they're telling you that the length of AC is six. So two different um, sequences of motions here. So we could um, dilate triangle ABC by, a, um, let's say, using A as the center and a scale factor of one half, make it smaller so dividing by two so a scale factor of one half so that's going to um <clears throat> take this triangle let's draw it out here so that's going to take this triangle and now make it the same size as the smaller one so it's gonna do this So we can shrink it by that factor of a half. So now it's going to be here. And then um, we would just need to do a reflection. So then reflect um, ABC over the line AC. And then that would um, send all of these vertices onto that other one. So that's one um, way you could do it. And then you just need to write two. So you could um, just do those backwards. So you could have reflected first. So we could have done um, reflect. And you could start, you could, you could either do these backwards, like do a reflection. Um, so reflect ABC over line AC first then do the dilation using A as the center um, and a scale factor of one half. So you could do that. Um, another thing you could do is instead of working with the bigger triangle, you could work with the smaller triangle. So if we worked with this smaller triangle, we could say reflect ADE, whoops, overline AC and then dilate ADE using A as the center and a scale factor of two this time if we wanted to make it bigger. But so multiple options there. Number three, what is the definition of similarity? So remember, um, two figures are similar if there is a set of rigid motions or rigid transformations and dilations that takes one figure onto the other. So rigid transformations is just for keeping them congruent. And then when you add in the dilations, that changes the size. So if there's a set of both of those, then they, the figures are going to be similar. Number four, select all figures that are similar to parallelogram P. So remember, one thing we want to look at is that the angles stay the same size. So if you find any where the angles have changed, then that would be not similar. So this figure C that has 45 and 135 in it, that's not similar. Um, and then when we look um, 
this parallelogram is actually a rhombus. All four sides are the same. So if any of the side lengths change, then we would have a non-similar shape. So in figure D, we've got sides that are five and sides that are three. So then that one's going to be bad. And same with figure E, we've got a five and a 10. So those are different sizes. And we see that it's changed to a trapezoid. So that would be bad. And um, so looking at figure A, it's actually the exact same size, which is fine. Congruent is also similar. Um, so this one has a scale factor of one. So this one is good. And figure B, um, the side lengths change to a three. So this has a scale factor of three fifths for every side. All the angles are the same. So this one again is also good. Number five, um, find a sequence of rigid transformations and dilations that take square ABCD to EFGH. So let's look at this first one. It says translate it by directed line segment AE. So that would move A to E. Then it says, um, which will take point B to another random point. So it took B to here, to B prime. Then it says rotate by angle um, with center E, okay, by angle B prime. So remember, this is B prime now, B prime E F. So this angle here, so rotate on this angle. That will take this side over to this one. So we'll do that. Then it says, then dilate using center E and a scale factor of five halves. So if we rotate by a scale factor of five halves, that's going to make this um, blue square larger. And we actually want it to get smaller. So this one is not going to be good. <clears throat> now B follows the same instructions up until the final part where it says dilate um, with center E and a scale factor of two fifths. So two-fifths is using the new length and the original length. And so that would um, shrink us right down onto that um, square EFGH. So B is good. Number six, triangle DEF is formed by connecting the midpoints of the sides. What is the perimeter of triangle ABC? Um, so remember that when we have these midpoints, um, this segment here that connects that is the same as the one that it's parallel to on this other side. So this one right here is two, and this one right here is two. So AC is actually double that length. So AC is four, and that's gonna happen with all of these um, sides. So this one is four here, so this one is eight. And then this final side here is three. So this larger side here is gonna be six. And then you can just add those up to get the perimeter. So that's one way to do it. So we get six and four is 10 and eight is 18. So the perimeter um, equals 18. Another way you can do it is looking at the perimeter of this inside triangle. So adding two plus three is five plus four is nine and then doubling that. So if you found the perimeter of the smaller one and just doubled it, you'd have gotten the larger perimeter also. Number seven, select a quadrilateral for which the diagonal is a line of symmetry. So I've drawn the shapes below here. Um, and so select the ones where, the di where a diagonal is also a line of symmetry. So we know in a parallelogram that's not true since the elongated side here um, does not work. So this is, um, uh, parallelogram is not true. Um, a square, the diagonal is a line of symmetry because the side lengths are the same. So this one would be good. Trapezoid diagonal definitely does not cut that in half, um, for a regular trapezoid or an isosceles trapezoid. So both of these are wrong as well. Number eight, triangles FAD and DCE are both translations of triangle ABC. So let's look at that. So we've got, here's triangle ABC. And then these other ones are translations of it. So if we take this and 
um, move it this way, we get that other triangle. And if we um, move it up here, we'll get FAD. So how do we know that CAD, so let me get rid of those. How do we know that CAD, this angle here, is equal to angle ACB, so this angle here. So how do we know that those two angles are congruent to each other? So when we did the translation of this um, triangle, we know that translations take lines parallel to each other. So since this AD was a translation of BC, we know that those two lines are parallel. And then we know that um, CAD and ACB are alternate interior angles. So you could just write that out. So, um, oops. Since BC and AD are translations of each other, they are parallel. And CAD and ACB are alternate interior angles, so they are congruent.